Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. All right, let's have a look at those troubleshooting commands in the lab. So I'm back on the lab here and I've got switch one is connected to router one. On the switch one side, it's on interface fast ethernet zero slash one. On R1, it's interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. Let's just confirm that. So I'll do a show on interface fast zero slash one on the switch. And I've put a description in there. It's the link to R1. I haven't configured any other settings on there. So they're all at the default. If I do a show IP interface brief, I can see that I've got my VLAN 1 interface configured with IP address 192.168.0.10. The router is at 192.168.0.1 and fast ethernet 0 slash 0 is up, up. So that all looks good. So I should be able to ping the router. Let's try that. Ping 192.168.0.1 and the ping is good. Okay. Let's have a look and see what happens if a device on the other side is down. So I'll go on to R1. Let's just verify we're going to configure the correct interface. So I'll do a show run interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. And I've got my description there. It's the link to switch one. It's IP address 192.168.0.1 and speed and duplex are at auto. So what I'm going to do on here is I'll go to global configuration and I'll go to interface fast ethernet zero slash zero and I'm going to do a shutdown. Actually, just before I do it, let's do a do show IP interface brief here as well. And we already know because it was good on the other side that fast ethernet zero slash zero is up, up. So it's all good and we can see the IP address on there. So I'm still at that interface configuration. Let's shut down the interface now and I should get a verification message. I can see the interface going down. I'll hit the up arrow a couple of times to bring back my do show IP interface brief. And I'll see now that on interface fast ethernet zero slash zero is now changed to administratively down because I shut down that interface. If I jump back onto the switch now, and I'll do a show IP interface brief again on here. I will see the interface fast zero slash one has now changed to down down because the interface has been shut down on the other side. So when you see down down, that usually indicates a layer one issue. Either the cable isn't securely connected on both sides or the device on the other side is powered down or just that particular interface on the other side is powered down. OK, so that's how we check that. Next up, let's check out the speed and duplex settings. Actually, I'll just show you also the show interface command while we're here as well. You saw this in earlier lecture. So that will give you information on interface. It'll tell you whether it's up or not. The MAC address, IP address will show in here as well. And what it's really useful for is it gives you interface statistics. So I can see if traffic is going through there or not. I can also see the amount of errors on there too. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look at the speed and duplex. So I'll do a show run for interface fast zero slash one again. And the speed and duplex is not set here, so it's going to default to auto. If I do a show interface fast zero slash one, I can see that the speed and duplex are set to auto. Okay. Um, let's have a look on R1 as well. So I'll do a do show run interface fast zero slash zero on here. And this shows that speed and duplex are auto. 
And if I do a do show interface fast zero slash zero, I can see that again, auto duplex and auto speed. I can also see the speed it's running at is 100. So it's running at 100 megabits per second. Okay, kind of issues that we can have here. Let's jump back on to switch one again. And I'll go to the interface configuration, which was for fast zero slash one. And I'm going to set the speed to 10 on this side. And I'll go on to R1 and I'll set the speed to 100 here. So I've got a speed mismatch now. And if I jump back onto the switch and do a do show IP interface brief, I can see that on interface fast ethernet zero slash one, it's now at down, down. So that's caused the interface to go down by having that speed mismatch. If I do the same command on R1, I do show IP interface brief. And I forgot to bring the interface up. Okay, let's fix that. So let's go interface fast zero slash zero and no shut. And now I'll do a do show IP interface brief, which does have the speed mismatch. And I can see on the router side, it's up down. So this interface has got a problem. It's not going to be passing traffic. So it was up down on the router side. And if we have a look on the switch side, I can see that it is down, down on this side. So if you have a speed mismatch, then that's going to cause an issue that it will bring the interface down typically. So let's fix that. I will set it to speed 100 on this side as well. So it matches on both sides now. And I'll just flap the link. So I'll do a shut and then a no shut to bring it down and then back up again. And now if I do a do show IP interface brief, I can see that the interface is now back up, up. So I fixed the problem, the interface is working again. Okay, so that was a speed mismatch. Now let's change the duplex. So on switch one, I'll set the duplex to half. And on the router, I will set the duplex to full. And I'll go back on the switch again. And it might take a few seconds, but CDP should tell me that there is a duplex mismatch. See, there it is, it comes now. So I get the CDP warning message about the duplex mismatch. You're only going to see this if you're connected in over a console connection by default, not by Telnet, but you could view it if you did a show log. If I do, I do show IP interface brief and I can see that the interface stays up in this case. So if you have a speed mismatch, it will bring the interface down. If you have a duplex mismatch, it will leave the interface up. But what's going to happen is you're going to get terrible performance over that link now because you're going to have loads of collisions on there. So if you do have that problem, make sure, again, that you set it to the same on both sides. So on my switch, I'll set it to duplex full. And on my router, I'll also set it to duplex full. And that's all my problems solved again. Okay, so that was our layer one and layer two basic troubleshooting commands. Again, remember, speed and duplex, make sure you set it the same on both sides. Okay, thank you. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.